In a time long ago, there was a kingdom called Galomir, a land where the people were happy, war was unknown, the children were polite and helpful at all times, and not just when mooching for chocolate. The monarch of the realm, King Peregrine, was wise and just and, all in all, a bit of a decent chap. Fond of philosophy, literature, and pictures of kittens in bonnets, he was an enlightened ruler. But he had among his retinue an official court magician, a brilliant but unscrupulous man by the name of Zarok. Instead of confining himself to the horoscopes and balloon animals for which he was employed, Zarok began to conduct horrific experiments on the bodies of the dead. Of course, people often get quite sensitive about their deceased loved ones, so it wasn't long before the king found out and had the sorcerer banished from the land. Zarok skulked away into the wilderness and busied himself by perfecting his experiments, seething with rage and practicing his diabolically evil laugh. At last, with an army of demons at his command, he set off to bring Galumia under his foul dominion. The captain of the royal guard, Sir Daniel Fortescue, led the militia into battle against this unholy horde. Songs are sung to this day of how he spearheaded the charge deep into the accursed multitude, how the invaders fell before him like wheat before the scythe, and how at last, though mortally wounded, he fell upon the infernal sorcerer and destroyed him utterly. True, these songs don't have particularly catchy choruses, but people cared less about chart success in those days. And so it was that Daniel Fortescue went down in history, the hero of Galamir. And there came upon the land a time of peace, harmony, and quality wines at affordable prices. The tranquility was to last for a hundred years, but then the sorcerer returned.
Dan's Crypt. The best place to go if you're looking for a dead Dan. Oi, you, Fortescue! At last! Come, get up! We got things to do! Hey, hey! Easy, my friend. In my culture, we treat the guests with courtesy. Especially if they stop by for 100 years. Hmm. Who am I? My friend, you should feel honored. Usually the corpses, their skulls are filled with just the worms. Instead, you get I, Al-Zalam, glorious genie of the Sultan Prince Razim the Ribald, noble protector of... Hmm. You doubt me? I see it in your eye. Well, it is true. With genies, usually we are trapped within the lamps. That is bad. Very oily for the skin. But far worse, let me tell you, is when evil sorcerer tricks you, traps you inside skull of cowardly knight. Oh, the smell! It is mustier than a Saracen's jockstrap. You imply that I lie. In my culture, that would earn you 50 strokes of the cut. And we are allergic to cuts. So that is a terrible punishment. But fine, if you're too busy with the being dead, we just sit back and watch Zarok destroy Galomir once more. Oh, you remember Zarok at least? Yes, that madman is back from the exile. He has mastered the dark magics, has been waking the dead, turning good men evil. He turns this land bad quicker than tub of yak's cheese next to warm radiator. Hmm. Why are you back among the living? His magic! Or perhaps fate? Fate gives you chance to redeem yourself. Make amends for your cowardly death. Eh? Yes, yes! I was there that fateful day! I saw you hanging back, pretending to tie your bootlaces, and getting hit by first stray arrow! <laughs> ah, never believe on publicity. You just a big coward, buried as big hero with poor genie still trapped inside his head. Come on, I know you are tough guy deep down. We can work with that. I will be guide. Maybe this time we truly defeat him. His men killed you. His magic cursed me. Together, we squash that creepy cockroach. Free me. Turn you into a real hero, eh? Well, well, well. He's back. Old Sir Daniel Fortescue, the hero <coughs> of Galomir. Rendered eyeless and lifeless by the first arrow. Rendered heroic by the mists of time. It's amazing what good PR can do. Now the fickle finger of fate has given him a second chance. A chance to make good his ignoble past. A chance to defeat Zarok and live up to the legend. If I had any breath, I wouldn't be holding it. Hmm. Oh. Anyway, many of my stony kind reside in Galomir. We may be woken with a gentle nudge, not with a kiss. Please, don't try the kissing thing. We don't have affectionate natures. You got a study? I never had you down as a reader. You, you use a monocle, right? Ah, a training room, eh? Nice decor. Early macabre. That is a rune key, Dan. Place it in the claw of the rune gate and open sesame! Ah, a beautiful map of Galomir. This will help us get around the realm. The graveyard. You wouldn't catch me digging graves in my yard. Spoils the ambience. I sense Zarok is very close by. Maybe at Cemetery Hill, which lies just beyond this graveyard.
up! Huh, you can light it, or hey, maybe just club stuff real hard. Shield, you look like proper knight now. Well, kind of. The Hall of Heroes. Bring the kids. It's like a theme park with a whole cast of lovable, heavily armed friends. Welcome, O oh undernourished one, to the Hall of Heroes, where the bravest warriors from history spend eternity feasting, arm wrestling, and singing out of tune. If they think you're worthy, you may be able to persuade them to give you a new weapon. In your case, you'll be lucky to walk away with a spud gun. Now move it, Twiggy. <laughs> Captain Fortescue, does the battle go well? <laughs> A temporary setback, I'm sure, sire. Gosh, they were merry times, slapping our thighs, downing beakers of bitter shandy, and the battles, ooh, they were fun too. How I wish I could help you in some way now. Mm -hmm. But hold, oh, you could take my crossbow. I used it at the Battle of Gallomir. After you were slain, I shot Zarak's champion, Lord Cardock, a clean kill, sir. Right through the eye, at some 300 yards. Hmm. Uh, not that there's anything clever about shooting someone in the eye, sir. Hmm. Cemetery Hill. An excellent name for a blues singer. Oh, no! You're back. Look 
looking like something from a butcher's dustbin. Oh, and watch that smell. Oh, decomposition. <laughs> well, you're too late anyway. My army has already risen from the grave. Still, never mind, eh? Chalk it up as yet another of your inglorious failures. <laughs> I really need to work on that mocking laugh. Spade, in a cemetery! I sense great logic at work. A witch's talisman, used near a bubbling cauldron to summon a witchy. The soil on that grave looks like the bowels of a man in a sleeping bag full of scorpions. Some rolling rocks look crumbly. Maybe try fucking them.
the Hall of Heroes, where heroes are allowed to store their umbrellas and raincoats. Fortescue, what's this I hear? That arch-cad Zarok still alive? Thought you killed the fella. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Never mind, you old war horse. Happens to the best of us. Think you slaughter a chap, but up he pops again. Crushed limbs flattering like cheap flags, but otherwise perfectly chipper. Or is that just me? What, what? Ha ha! Ha ha! Anyway, I expect Johnny Zombie's a bit more of a handful than you remember. How are you doing for weapons, old man? Hmm. Tell you what. Take my old war hammer. It's no bother. In two centuries, all I've used it for is putting up shelving. Hmm. Dan's Crypt, the best place to go if you're looking for a dead Dan. It is your mummy, Dan! What? Suddenly I can do no jokes. A training room, eh? Nice decor. Early macabre. That is a rune key, Dan. Place it in the claw of the rune gate and open sesame! Welcome to the Hall of Heroes. Enjoy your visit. Patrons are reminded to leave quietly. We've had complaints from the neighbors. Fortescue, you jawless arrow magnet. What are you doing in a hall of heroes? <laughs> How I pity the people of Galamir. Oh, that their fate should be in the hands of a vacuum-headed chimp like you. Still, I suppose it's not fair to take it out on them. Take my longsword. And try not to stab yourself in the foot. You know, I've always had my doubts about you, Fortescue. You're simply not carved from hero material. The Hilltop Mausoleum. Think of it as a kind of pet shop, but with less fragrant purchasing choices. Oh, Dan, Daniel, Danikins. You are so persistent, I'll give you that. But then so are beggars, babies. And I trample those underfoot, too. Look, you really must get it into your thick... Exposed cranium, you cannot stop me from conquering Galomir. Already I have transformed the populace into servile zombies and drained the sunlight from the skies, withering many a tomato plant in the process. How could a spindly monovisual carcass like you reverse the momentum of such an epic master plan? And see where your stubbornness has got you? <laughs> Do you see? You're trapped forever in this necropolis. Still, you could always discuss your predicament with my good friend up there. I'm sure he'd do his best to help you. 
you sadly. I can't hang about to listen to the musical twang of your tendons. My army is amassed, and it will not be long before my scouts locate the demon claw that will unlock my beloved shadow demon. I must return home to oversee the invasion of this pathetic realm and possibly take a power nap. Beware, imps are sticky finger thieves. Trust me, we can spot our own. The floor is collapsing! Run! Run! Get out quick! I trust you find your... Not again! The floor is giving way, Dan! Run for our lives! I am compelled by some primal force always to play this song of fear and sadness. Please, bring me new music, that I may break this cycle of endless misery. Go on, do us a favor. It's driving me mental.
Peter looks like the heart is his only weak point. By the sacred underwear of Brittany, goddess of popular beat combos. I underestimated you, my friend. Dying obviously did you the world of good. That key opens the glass demon gate in the cemetery. The Hall of Hero. Not you again, you dirty great stopout. Haven't you got a crypt to go to? Dan? Dan. Dan the man. Tell me, what's a warrior queen got to do to get a guy like you? Mm -hmm. Don't be shy, baby. I've seen you giving me the eye. You may be weak and feeble like all men, but I like you, Daniel. <laughs> Here, lover. Hold my spear. Grip it tight now. And think of me when you throw it. Return to the graveyard. We went there earlier. If you have reasonable short-term memory, you might remember it. We need to get out of this graveyard. The glass demon's key might help. Oh! 
This path leads to undertakers. <laughs> An old acquaintance of yours, eh, Dan? Greetings, stranger. I'm Death. It is I who eased the passage of lost souls on their final journey. The hours are hell, but I wanted a job working with people. <laughs> but hold. Have we not met before? Sir Daniel Fortescue! I've done you once already. I never forget a corpse. It's that pesky Zarok. I'm after my eye sockets and the ex-deceased. Business hasn't been this brisk since the great massacre of Melomede. I may have to take on an intern. <laughs> Help you fight Zarok? Of course. If only to get some rest. I'd be off on holiday topping up my tan if it wasn't for that evil old madman. But there is a way to stop him. <laughs> You'll need the Anubis Stone. It was used by Zarok a hundred years ago to create an undead army. The very army that you fought on the day of your, uh, arrow-based mishap. After that most bloody of battles, the Galamir people acquired the stone. To prevent its power being used again for evil, they broke it into four and gave each piece to a trusted member of the realm. You'll need to find all four pieces to use the stone's power. Then you can summon up an army that can compete with Zarak's elite guard. The terrifying Fazgul's. They sound like a trapeze act, but trust me, they're a lot less fun. <laughs> well, I've seen and heard many things on my deathly duties. I could write a book, you know. Of course, no publisher would touch it. <laughs> All I want these days is romantic fiction and epic poems. Anyway, one piece was buried with the great Mullock chief. His tomb is in this very cemetery. The mayor of Sleeping Village inherited a piece from his predecessor and knows its current whereabouts. There's a rumor that the Witch of Pumpkin Gorge has a piece in her possession, although she may have put that about herself to drum up some tourist fortune-telling trade. Ah, yes, and the fourth and final piece is in possession of the deceased King of Galamere. Assuming he is still deceased, you never know these days, do you? I mean, look at you. But if he is... It'll be locked in his castle vault. Okay? <laughs> You're very welcome. Now go and stop Zarok before he drives me to an early grave. By the sandals of the wandering hippie, the famous Moloch Chief's Memorial!
A piece of the Anubis stone. Its power and worth is unimaginable. I know a bar where I can get this for this. Excellent work, my brother. Let me ruffle your head. Oh, never mind. But we have escaped. Galomir Plains lies beyond that gate. The Hall of Heroes, where heroes are allowed to store their umbrellas and raincoats. A 
that you look, running around in your bones, Fortescue. You are just so nouveau dead. Huh? I, Raven Hooves, last of the Centaur Princes, have not the Earth in a thousand years galloped. But last time out, I won on the flat by seven lengths. <laughs> Carrying nine stone eleven. Crazy. Yourself a favor do, Fortescue. Take my long bow. It is the weapon of noblemen. <laughs> my breeding you don't quite have, Mr. Johnny Die Lately. But you do your best, I sure. Ciao, Bell. <laughs> Welcome to Sleeping Village, where zombies gamble like poorly coordinated spring lambs. Hey, stop! You can't do this to me, Aunt Mayor, I am. I can do what I like, you foolish pot belly. Now, once again, where is the Shadow Demon Claw? I can't say. I'll not betray my constituency. Not in an election year. Oh, you misguided assortment of porky scratchings. To the asylum with him. He'll remember soon enough, once he's spent a few nights slopping out with a possessed lunatic. By heck! You'll not get away with this! A traditional, but factually inaccurate statement. Captain! Tear this pathetic village apart! The claw will be here somewhere! And don't forget to check in Fat Boy's Biscuit Barrel. But this is outrageous! The mare is not mad? Mad for pies, maybe? Listen, my friend, I did some time in a nut house, and that butterball will be singing like a canary before he's dried off from the first shower. We must follow them. If we want to get our meat on the Anubis stone fragment, we've got to save that porky politician. Greetings, stranger. Yeah. <laughs> 
the Hall of Heroes. Hmm. Sorry. Uh, what can I tell you? Your name's not on the list. <laughs> I'm just messing. In you go. Fortescue, you're back on the battlefield, yes? This is good. People say to me, Sterngard, what do you think of this sword? Or that axe, or this stupid long pole thing with the dinky point on the end? But I say to them, no, 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 you idiots fine herd with the watery gaze. Modern warfare is a question of science. And the foremost scientific instrument in the world is the shield. And then I pan them with it in the face. Mm -hmm. Then I think maybe you should take my shield, yeah? Test it in the field, in true scientific manner. You will see for yourself that it is magic. You will benefit enormously. Inside the asylum. Here be fire-breathing monsters, headless ghouls, and... Oh, actually, no, that's somewhere else. This is the one with the mad people in.
Халауство. Skellington! Me not gonna hurt you! Let's play act game! Chop, chop, choppy! Note, I think I acquire pretty bad axe phobia. Oh, right. This is no place for a man. Oh, a miss for lovely house, especially the pantry. I want a proper toilet. For pity's sake. Someone bring me a dinner. Bah, heck. I've seen some nutters in here, but never have I witnessed such a face. The craze grin of the imbecile. And not one shred of sanity left in that terrible, boggly eye. Keep away from me! Hmm. 
Hmm? Oh, sorry, pal. No offence, like. Can you help? I shouldn't be in here. I'm not mad. I'm the mer. Oh, I miss my whole life. Opening fates, mayoral dinners, showering without a possessed psychopath, offering to scrub me back. Please get me out of here. <coughs> the Anubis Stone. Now, there's a thing. I know the whereabouts of a piece of that stone, but I tell you, it won't be easy to get at. It resides in a proper scary place. The Shadow Demon Prison. Down in the Enchanted Forest. Left there many a year ago by my granddad's granddad. For safety reasons. <laughs> it's right complicated. First, they'll need to get into the Enchanted Forest. Luckily, I've got the key with me here. Second, you'll need the Shadow Demon Claw that'll get you into the prison itself. The claws in the safe in my house. There's not the time to go into that now, but I've left clues in the village to help you get that safe open. Last, you'll need to find the witch that resides in that dark forest. She knows where the entrance to the prison is. Got all that? Hmm. Good. Now let's both be on our way before Zarek gets back. Have you got a sausage roll? How about a scotch egg? Sleeping Village, where you can buy the mare off for the pie. Ooh, get you. He has returned. The Zero of Gallomere. Ha, <laughs> that's rather good, isn't it? I write all my own stuff, you know. Anyway, listen up, paper bag for brains. The boiler guards are looking for the demon claw. So, get ready to deal out some bony justice. And hey, don't hurt the villagers. They're not a bad lot. They're only violent psychos because they're possessed. So cut them some slack, OK? Now, get on with it. The more I look at you, the less I want my dinner. Those lazy boiler guards must be on break. Let's go pillage. Turn this place over from top into bottom and find that blasted claw. Oh, why I always forget my rubber gloves on days like this?
Hurry, comrades, tear this place apart. If we don't find the demon claw, Zarok will have us mucking out the lava trees for the next millennium. like we have cut off the water.
the Hall of Heroes. Bring the kids. It's like a theme park with a whole cast of lovable, heavily armed friends. Greetings again, good Captain Fortescue. My heart glows to see that you're still alive, Sirrah. <laughs> Gosh, but I miss the camaraderie of serving with you, all cuddled in together, keeping warm at night, telling scary stories until we're afraid to put the light out. <laughs> in fact, in memory of those marvelous times, I'd like you to have my most cherished of crossbows, designed specifically for heroes just like you. I never got round to using it properly, what with Zarok killing me prematurely and all that. But I'd love you to shoot something into his eye for me, for old time's sake. <laughs> Scarecrow feels prepared to be scared if you're a crow. Oh, Scarecrow's always freak me out. It's the hand sticks eyes. Let's hurry through to Pumpkin Gorge. Huh, those haystacks look drier than your bath mat. There are nasty, creepy, scratchy things in the corn crops, Dan. Don't stray from the paths. Metallic imp. <laughs> On any other day, that would seem weird. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome to the Hall of Heroes. 
I went to the Hall of Zeros once. It's quite dull, but at least they don't all make chicken noises when your back's turned. Ha! 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 Ah. Fortescue, you skinless swineherd. What do you want this time? <coughs> well, yes, I should think you do need help. Sadly, I'm not a psychiatrist or a cosmetic sawbones. I can only help a shoddy rapscallion like you in one way. Here, take this magnificent hero sword before I change my mind. Although I fear it will be wasted on the likes of you. <laughs> Pumpkin Gorge. Not George, Gorge. Pumpkin George hasn't been around these parts for years. We need to find Pumpkin Witch. Let's hope she still has her piece of the Anubis stone. Rampaging orange vegetable life. It'd be right peculiar. <laughs> oh no, tain't her doing. It's that pumpkin king as rules him now. Weird fella he is, with a devilish temper and a basketball for a head. And that's why I'm trapped. I tried cutting, I tried chewing, but these roots are tougher than yesterday's pasty. Maybe you can find a weakness somewhere. Get I free, Zer Knight, and I'll give you the key to old witchy girl's camp. How's that? Maybe then you can find her and help her bring her unruly produce to heal. Oh, I wonder if this means we have invented the elevator.
Well, shave my head and call me a mangle woozle. I thought those murderous pumpkins would be the death of me. Then he rode up. A deal's a deal. Septon Cornish Wall, steer clear of that lot. This here's the key what gets you into old witchy feller's camp. Now be off with you and sort things out before more pumpkins come to batter my tatties. <laughs> Perhaps we need to summon witch, Dan. We ain't got time to hang around. You fleshless freak! Hang on. Is that you, Sir Daniel? I didn't recognize you for a moment. Eyebrows make such a difference to a man's looks. As indeed does the rest of the face. <laughs> Must be mm, the best part of a century since I saw you. And then suddenly, here you are. You never wrote me! terrible time I'm having. I devoted my life to my sweet, sweet babies, suckling them at the tea. I mean, planting them in good, nutritious soil. <laughs> and this is how I'm rewarded. Hey. How, you say? By an evil, treacherous act of massive ingratitude! That... It was only a little gross spell for Pumpkey Mumpkey. He was special. I wanted the best for him, and now he's gone rogue on me. A renegade pumpkin king! Sucking the life from the land, growing in power all the time. But I just can't bring myself to harvest him. His little pumpkin eyes used to be so sweet. <coughs> really, dear boy? You do it. But how could I ever repay such homicidicity? I mean, bravery. <laughs> My Anubis stone piece. The precious! Well, I suppose I could give it to you in return, but... No! What am I saying? Dare I? Oh, pound the orange monster and we'll talk about it. Come <laughs> on. 
need to wake the pumpkin king somehow. <laughs> Typical, the one day I did not bring my trombone. Somebody woke up on the wrong side of the patch. <laughs> Okay, you make fine veggie kebab out of him. Hooray! Now, where is chili sauce? you want my precious now? <laughs> I meant the Anubis stone. What do you think I was talking about? Weirdo. Here, take it if you must. And Sir Daniel? Yeah? If you see my sister, the forest witch, on your travels, tell her to stop plotting against me or I'll boil her head in her stinking hippie gaffdan for pig food! Okay? Bye-bye.
the Hall of Heroes. Hmm. Sorry, uh, what can I tell you? Your name's not on the list. <laughs> I'm just messing. In you go. Daniel the Manual, how are you, lover? Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> now, you know that ain't true. Or why would you be coming back to your ever-loving Imanzi? The world been harsh to you again? Let me take care of you, give you a little of my good stuff. I have a special gift for you. Here, use it wisely. Galamere Plains, the less beautiful relative of Galamere Fetching. Beyond this locked gate, through the enchanted forest, lies the sea. Romantic, isn't it? The Enchanted Forest. You need a very specific microclimate and a loamy soil to produce an enchanted forest. Okay, remember, we seek the forest witch. Just look for old hippie chick, probably hugging trees or something. That funky smell! Scented candles and lentil bake. <laughs> it's got to be witchy's camp! Greetings, Sir Daniel Fortescue. You have summoned the Witch of the Forest. But... Aha! I see you are surprised I know your name. I have the power, you see. I commune with the tree spirits. I can see auras. I can see psychic imprints. I can see the label in the back of your armor. But wait. I also see a vision. You seek a mysterious lady to advise you on color therapy for the monovisual and teach you the meaning of leathery love. Okay, okay. You're looking for the prison of the shadow demon. I knew it. I see all. But the prison is hidden by an enchantment, Sir Fortescue. Do not despair. I can lift the enchantment. But first, you must do something for me. There is a fungus that grows around these parts. It is harvested and guarded by a gang of woodland fairies. I need four, four, I say, pieces of this fungus for a potion I am brewing for my sister, the Pumpkin Witch. Bring me my fungi, Sir Fortescue, and the prison will be revealed to you. Here, take this magical net, you bone-faced buffoon. Those fairy freaks are faster than they look. You're in fairy territory now. We're geezers, right? Bit of ducking and diving, bobbing and weaving. We're rough diamonds, but we love our mothers. 
Now, what brings you down our manor? <laughs> Looking for fungus, eh? <laughs> well, you've come to the right place, me old mate. Why don't you make us an offer? <laughs> hey, you're my fungus for free? <laughs> I think you better go, pal, before I give you a slap. <laughs> Stone me a magic net! Peg it! Okay, okay, it's a fair cop. Take your fungus and whack off out of it. But you better watch your back, because I've got friends, see? Yeah, my sister knows the two fairies. I'm the fastest fairy ever. Look, <laughs> I'm just a blur. Go on, have it. <laughs> you what? Hand over my fungus to a civilian? Do me a favor. <laughs> Fat chance, tortoise said. Get your own. Ooh, I'm so scared. I'm busted for an earther. <laughs> You want something from me, you have to catch me first, sunshine. Come on, Will. Pull your finger out. Oi! Oi! Yeah, mate, that that's the business. Give a go. Oh, go on. You take the fungus and leg it, and I'll chase you. Oh, mate, you look lost. We after. <laughs> Give you my fungus? You're having a laugh, ain't ya? Ha, here, did Kev pull you up to this? <laughs> well, a magic net. Well, this guy's tooled up. I'm off. <laughs> wow, 
Well, look at the face, look at the face. Take the fungus, all right, it's yours. And tell Kev, next time I see him, I'll punch his pixie lights out. I trust you for... with you, gravestone gub. Are you the sobby tart what's been sniffing round this manor for fungus? Mm -hmm. I'll give you one about it, cos I'm the daddy now. Don't you wind me up, what? You be butcher's twat, you walking eye socket. Good sir knight, I knew you'd come through with the mouldy growths. At last I can prepare my concoction. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's it for, you say? It is a medicinal unguent of great power. An enchanted remedy for my sister's head. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, that's right. She's a lifelong migraine sufferer. <laughs> Bad posture. Now go! Henceforth, you will find the prison of the Shadow Demons revealed to you.
Oh, my brother, I take back all I said about your small head. You have done it! This fragment of the Anubis stone is like a pilgrim's money belt. Ours to take. Grab it! We're home free! I don't like this! Make haste with your weapons done, or we go the way of the kebab!
Mr. Zarok, sir. Gallomere Castle lies yonder, off the bows. Ah, the castle. Ancestral home to a long line of kings. Last relic of a more noble time. I've long dreamed of this moment. Oh, Lord, look at that provincial decor. Aye, tis a pretty fortress, yours for the taking. Actually, I thought I'd start with a few modifications. Open fire, Captain. Pound the walls to rubble and smash the rubble to dust. But, sir, the castle rests on a long dormant volcano. Might that not be a tad mm, risky? Why, Captain, you might be right. Ah, I see. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> Silence. Uh -oh. The Hall of Hero. Not you again, you dirty great stopout. Haven't you got a crypt to go to? <laughs> ah, look, everybody. It is the common little Fortescue man. You're back so soon. Like how you say, a bad growth, we? Oui? Uh-huh. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. It seems to me that you are in the weapon department a little undernourished. But worry not, for I, the great Raven Hooves, has taken pity on you. And will your armory bolster evict this amazing fiery longbow? Perfect for flaming kerchies and crusting creme brulee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, we crowned heads of Europe are known for our good taste, the exquisite manners, and excellent pace over the chaps. And we give things away to show that we can afford to. Leave me now. Your dress sense offends me, and your breath smells of earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The Pools of the Ancient Dead. You didn't know the Ancient Dead played pool, did you? Ah, everyone has to have a hobby, you know. Oh, great. The bridge collapsed. Now we need to find other way to get over river. Some days I don't know why we bother getting out of crypt. So, Dan, ciao. You're not doing at all badly, but there's still much to do if Zarak and his hellish Fazgul's are to be vanquished. I can ferry you on from here, but first, you must help me. My new robotic assistant, Mechadeth, has just blown up. I'd sent him off to clear up this battlefield when suddenly there's an almighty bang, and machine parts are raining down everywhere. I knew I shouldn't have bought second-hand. Do me a favor and gather up the pieces, would you? I've got to go and fill out a warranty card. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and while you're at it, if we're ever going to leave, I'll need you to release my boat. It's around here somewhere, locked up in a boathouse. I don't know. You miss one repayment and they impound your whole livelihood.
Incoming! Incoming! Ramdan, we're about to be rear-ended! Thank <laughs> you. 
Well done, Dan. Excellent work. Parts collected, boat free. Your can-do attitude is an inspiration to all. Now, what do you want to hear first? Bad news or bad news? Uh, no. There's nothing you technically call good news as such. Bad news it is. Zarok has pulverized King Peregrine's castle and released a river of molten lava that bars your way to the entrance. Bad news, too. The sequel, if you like. I can't ferry you there. I only take souls on one-way journeys. It's a clause in my insurance, so I could ferry you there, but you'd be stranded in no man's land. But apart from that, everything's great. Wait, done! As my people say, there's more than one way to mount a camel. Legend tells of a suit of fireproof armor hidden on Dragon Island. If we get our sweaty little paws on it, we could walk through the lava. Gad, your little talking worm is right. Good luck, my brave but somewhat idiosyncratic team of adventurers. I'll take the boat upstream and wait for you by the ruins. Maybe point the icy finger of death at a heron or something, I don't know. Ah, sometimes I think this job lacks the creative spark. The Hall of Hero. Not you again, you dirty great stop out. Haven't you got a crypt to go to? Hey! Fortiske, Blood Moon of Skull Cleaver won't talk with you. <laughs> so why you spell it Fortiske, foolish Western fool? What Blood Moon of Skull Cleaver want to know is, if this Zarok so bad, how come you get go back slaughter him, huh? Why you, Fortuske, you who catch foot on grass like girl in chase scene, woo -hoo, twist the ankle and shot, bad, straighten eye by harrow, squish, gurgle, gurgle, without blood of enemy on hands, eh? Hmm. Still, I'm not bitter. Here, I'll lend you my battle axe. She thirsts for blood, as much as I. <laughs> Don't worry, she not hurt you, girly girl. <laughs> Scurvy dogs. Pirates and smugglers are plenty, but not much in the way of vitamin C. Ah, smell the fresh sea air, Dan. <laughs> Actually, it's not very fresh, is it? Oh, well, <laughs> at least the view is pretty. Welcome to Scurvy Docks, a seaside playground for the dregs of Galamere society. Pirates, smugglers, strumpets. Knaves, rascals, blasphemers, finks, loafers and scallywags of every kind. It's worse when the weekend crowd turns up. Oh yeah, and the ghost ship docks here too, loaded up with Zarak's boiler guards. If I were you, I'd come back in the off-season. You could always head straight off to Dragon Island, but you'll need a boat. Try the Harbour Master, but he's kind of particular. Thank <laughs> you. 
We need to find a way of getting the harbor master's attention. Right, what have we here then? You're not one of my regulars, I can see that. Mm -hmm. A boat? You want a boat? Not possible, I'm afraid. The Seafaring Charter, Chapter 3, Rule 7, only pirates can rent pirate boats. Got standards to keep up, see? Next! <laughs> you are a pirate? Yes, of course you are. And my name's Jolly Roger. <laughs> Listen, your genuine buccaneer wears tricorn hats and eye patches. They have peg legs and parrots. I know these things. I meet pirates on a professional level every day of the week. Now, keep out of my way. Blocking my counter is a serious breach of health and safety, and I've got a ship returning as we speak. Pirates done, and they look hopped up on cheap grog and sea biscuits. Smuggler ship, full of bootleg designer gear, no doubt. Come on, I love a bargain. Yeah. <laughs> 
must be Captain's hideaway. That or someone like decorating with nautical theme. Last, somebody I can do business with. A genuine scurvy sea dog, a black hearted scourge of the high seas, and if I may be so bold, quite a dashing one at that. Mm -hmm. Shame you couldn't patch up your eye socket, but I guess that's the latest crazy seafaring fashion, eh, Captain Burney? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure you have plundering to do. J j just follow me and I'll show you your boat. The Hall of Heroes. Like Valhalla. Only I'm legally obliged to say we're not affiliated. Are they done? How are you doing? Hmm? I have to say, you're looking a bit boony. I've told you to stay off the tabs. Are you getting enough chips, man? You look like you could do with a good curry or two. Mm hmm? Now, hey, man, have you got yourself a magic sword, Lee? Like? Hmm? What's that you say? Daniel, man, you cannot go into battle against an army of the undead without having you as a magic sword. Are you mental or something? Hmm, 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 Yeah, man, take mine, man, pet. You'll get nowhere without it, I'm telling you. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Dragon Island. Islands with dragons on were once considered quite the fashionable property investment. When we meet Dragon, don't be intimidated, okay? Just think of it as fire-breathing armored lizard the size of a house. Oh, Lord, what do you want? Please don't tell me you're here on a quest. It's incessant, it really is. What do you want? <laughs> oh, I do so loathe the attentions of the great unwashed. That diction brings tears to one's eyes. Enunciate. <laughs> ah, my dragon plate armor. Yes, it's certainly a bold piece. Look at the line, the detail. Très chic, très amusant, très now. The breastplate came from my mother, you know. That woman was a saint. Oh, <laughs> dear boy. No, 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 no. I feel for you, I really do. I mean to say, that outfit you're sporting is so last century. But you're asking for a piece of my mother. Do I come around your house demanding a slice of boiled pig's knuckle or whatever vile creature you were spawned from? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, how absolutely vulgar. Really, this is all I need. I suppose I'll have to grill you alive like the others, but what does one do with them after one's cooked them? I can't abide tinned food. Mm, those crystals on the ceiling look loose. A tremor might bring them falling down. I'm an intellectual. I have no time for this. Here, take my mother and go, you boggly-eyed oik. No more, please. I'm getting one of my heads. Dan's Crypt. The best place to go if you're looking for a dead Dan. Ah, a training room, eh? Nice decor. Early Macau. 
That is a rune key, Dan. Place it in the claw of the rune gate and open sesame! Inside the asylum, here be fire-breathing monsters, headless ghouls, and... Oh, actually, no, that's somewhere else. This is the one with the mad people in.
халауства. Skeleton! Me not gonna hurt you! Skellington, go to Naughty Stare! <laughs> Woohoo! You did it! <laughs> you did it! On this happy note, I think I acquire pretty bad axe phobia. Oh, I miss the lovely house, especially the pantry. Oh, I miss the lovely house, especially the pantry. Bye, come on, girl. Anyone? I'm not supposed to be here. This is no place. The Hall of Heroes. Hmm. Sorry. Uh, what can I tell you? Your name's not on the list. <laughs> I'm just messing. In you go. Fortescue, you must stop stalking me, or I will call my cousin, who is a police horse. <laughs> <laughs> Only for fun, of course. <laughs> he doesn't the money need. He just likes the underclasses to trample. Perhaps I should try slumming it occasionally. 
But then I talk to you. You are the yin to my aristocratic yang. Do you see? <coughs> Enough small talk. A final gift for you. A magic longbow, no less. Of course, and simple person like you should find its raw power very pleasing. Personally, I prefer something in gold. <coughs> Dan, you're a veritable star, though sadly I fear one destined to work in radio. I'd shake you by the hand were it not for the unfortunate side effects. Get your potato-shaped bottom in my boat, and let's hit the haunted ruins. Passage to the haunted ruins. If a person were determined to make their way to the haunted ruins, they could do a lot worse. It's up to you now, Dan. The fourth and final piece of the Anubis Stone lies among this crumbling fortress. The fate of all Galomir now rests upon your bony shoulders. But hey, no pressure. Thank you, greedy chickens. We are in! Ha! Now to find your old friend, King Peregrine! Free us! Before we drop on them there spikes! for rescuing us, coin sir. Forgive us, we have no pig to reward you. But we'd be right honored if you'd accept these shiny gold-colored stones as token of our thanks.
Sir Daniel Fortescue, noblest of my courtiers, bravest of my captains, clumsiest of my croquet team. Oh, that we should meet at such a dark hour, with the fate of this realm lying once again in your hands. Good Lord Fortescue, what happened to your jaw? Mm -hmm. Bad luck, old man. Dashed awkward for the meat course, what? Can I get you a soup or something? <laughs> oh, of course. My new bestowed is yours, old man. Can't think of a better chap to look after it. However, slightly more pressing concern is that the Shadow Demon Army hides beneath us, within this very mountain. As we speak, they prepare to invade good old Galomir. If we're to thwart that arch-cad Zarak, we must bring down the castle on top of them. You follow? Simple solution, of course. Someone must unleash the lava behind the castle floodgates. Burn the blighters where they stand, or even where they sit. <laughs> Probably hurt more. I knew you'd volunteer. What a man. A secret passage behind the throne will give you access to the gate's control lever. You just have to pull it. Of course, it's a highly dangerous mission, even for a dead man. I dare say that when that fiend sees what you've done, he'll make sure you spend eternity in the most unspeakable torment. But then I know these things mean nothing to a man of your courage, eh, Fortescue? Mm -hmm. Splendid! Good luck, old bean. Break a leg. Mm -hmm. By the socks of my fathers, the castle's coming down! Kill these guardians so we can blow this joint. Hurry, Dad! We don't have long! Welcome to the Hall of Heroes. I went to the Hall of Zeros once. It's quite dull, but at least they don't all make chicken noises when your back's turned. Ha! 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 Daniel, there you are, my lovely. I was so worried when you left. Come over here, where I can look at you. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you look weaker than a kitten. A kitten has been chewed up by a Welsh collie. <laughs> I know you have the heart of a hero, Daniel. Don't listen to anyone else. The laughing hordes and the thousands who mock you, who call you Target Face. Mm -hmm. They don't know you the way I do, Daniel. And I'm going to help you prove them wrong. Being an indomitable Celtic superwoman, I, of course, have an array of magic lightning bolts. 
at my disposal? Yeah. I'll let you use them too. Be careful with them though. They cause terrible scorch marks on natural fibers. <laughs> On board the ghost ship. How do ghosts tie their ships up at a dock? Surely the rope would slip between their ghostly fingers. A stowaway on board. I've told the men to scour the decks for him. Excellent! And once you as catch him, scour the decks with him. Use his nostrils as a dust buster and his armpit hair as a mop. <laughs> Is that absolutely necessary? Couldn't we just give him a good tongue lashing and drop him off at the next port? There'll be no tongue lashing on my ship, Mr. Mate! We be bloodthirsty cutthroats, not cantankerous air dressers. Now, I want that landlubber dangling from yonder yard arm. By his bowels! Mm, how horrid. He won't cause us any problems anyway. He can't access this section of the ship. I've had the men barricade us in. Ah, why do you always barricade us in together, weirdo? Oh, just get on with it. Catch that scurvy bilge rat. We need to get control of this ship. It is our only way to get to Zarok. That, my brother, is one big gun. I bet it needs loads of gunpowder.
That's enough! Any more gunpowder and that huge cannon will put us into orbit!
Okay, my friend. It is time to test this cannon out. I'll light the fuse, then we climb in quick. Got that? Oh, don't be such a baby. I will be fine. I will be safe inside your head. As for you, well, just try to land on your toughest point. Hang on, I've not thought this through. <laughs> we have taken the ship! Lower the whatnot, hoist the doohickey, um, something to the anchor. Anyway, steer a course for Zarok's lair. <laughs> the Hall of Heroes. Bring the kids. It's like a theme park with a whole cast of lovable, heavily armed friends. Herr Fortescue, you have come to visit me again, yeah? You look a little battered and weak, for sure. You should make better use of your magical shield. The magical shield is the foremost scientific weapon in the... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, then for now, we will concentrate on reviving your strength for the fight ahead. Drink this potion to feel as mighty and warrior-like as Karl Sterngard himself. But nicht so handsome, of course. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Zarok's lair. Ooh, scary. Oh, it's you. Uh, <clears throat> actually, we never thought you'd get this far. I don't really have anything written down. Uh, hang on. Uh, okay, here goes. Your final encounter! Damn. Sorry. Pressure. Your final encounter, that's better, with Zarok awaits beyond this point. He has surrounded himself with his unnatural bodyguards. We've always had our suspicions about that lot. But you may yet even the odds by calling upon the powerful magic of the Anubis Stone. Good luck, third annual Forteth girl. Oh, look, that'll have to do. Now go on and die quietly. Some of us are trying to read. Ha! Ah, this is it! The final showdown! Finally, you can prove yourself as warrior! Be brave, Sir Fortescue! And remember, we have all pieces of the Anubis Stone! Oh, and if it looks like you're going to lose, don't let him hit you in the head. I've got the place just how I want it now. Sir Fortescue, my old nemesis, so we meet again. <laughs> I see that a century spent as rotting meat has done nothing to diminish your naive obsession with the freedom of Galomir. Do you remember my champion, the late Lord Cardon? Well, guess what? He's back! <laughs> and he says he's looking forward to shooting you in the other eye. You know, for old time's sake. <laughs> and while Lord K prepares for your rematch, he sent some of his soldiers so you don't get bored. his attacks and he'll lose his cool!
What? You dare defeat Lord Cardock? At least I won't miss mucking out his stable. But of course, Fortescue, you still have to die. Prepare the attack, my beautiful Fazgolds. Interesting Fazgol factor. Did you know that Fazgolds are impervious to mortal weapons? It's really quite fascinating. So unless you're hiding a ghostly penknife or a spectral billiard ball in a sock, this battle is going to be very short and uninspiring. Goodbye, Fortescue. Okay, time to fuse the Anubis Stone! What's that? The Anubis Stone! Oh, this is going to be good. Fortescue, what's a gangling dullard like you hope to do with the Sacred Stone? Some of the most learned sorcerers in history have been driven mad trying to understand its elusive mysteries. But don't let me dampen your optimism, my Lord Captain of the King's Croquet Team. Dan, use the Anubis stone to keep your troops fighting fit. Fortescue, forty, baby. You are full of surprises. Who could have foreseen that my Fazgal horde would be bested by a rancid ignoramus and his flybait army? But how are you with creeping things, Fortescue? Obviously, you're fond of worms. You've shacked up with them for a century. But how are you with snakes? Hmm? Do they scare you? Big snakes find them agreeable, do we? How about huge, monstrous snakes, Forty, darling? How about... Me! Hit him in the mouth! He don't like that, I think. Ah, he's my 
mouth! His mouth gun! Get his mouth! The tip of his tail, Dan! It is his sensitive spot! Get his mouth! His tail down! It is his sensitive spot! Curse you, Fortescue! Curse you! Curse you! Thricehold! So... It's come to this. I am finally defeated. Painfully, ignominiously. But particularly painfully. But! If I am to fail, then all shall perish with me! I didn't get to be the embodiment of evil without maintaining certain traditional standards. You are doomed, Fortescue. You will never leave this place. <laughs>
At last, Frida! And so Sir Daniel Fortescue finally earned his place in the Hall of Heroes. Down on the right, past the one who looks like a pantomime horse with a dodgy accent. And Galomir, fair Galomir, was freed from the yoke of evil. The sun beamed down from the heavens once more. Small children skipped and ducks could paddle the ponds in safety. Zarok, the most vicious, most malignant, most foul of creatures, was utterly vanquished. This time... Never to return. Well, assuming there isn't a sequel.